everybody, Grit21 here, back with another video. And a few months ago, as you guys might recall, I did a review of the Razer Black Widow Chroma keyboard that was the RGB keyboard, which obviously Chroma would suggest that, but it was just, it was a really cool keyboard when I've got it, and I obviously have it sitting here, and I really have enjoyed uh, using it and things like that. But recently, uh, Razer released an update, a rather big update actually, to their Synapses 2.0 software, which I'm surprised they don't call it a 3.0, considering the fact of all the updates that they've had for it, but that's just what they call it. Um, which basically allows you to do even more customization of the keys, of the wave effect, you can now do a ripple effect, you can do um, more customization with the static effects, and we're actually going to go or that is, I'm going to go softer side and show you guys everything that you can do with this software because I think this is just absolutely awesome. And then um, I'll come out and I'll just finish up on my thoughts of it. And yeah, so here we go. Here we are, softer side, and there's my other camera there. I have one camera pointed down at the keyboard and I have another camera pointed at me, so that's how you're able to see both these in real time. So I've probably got a lot going on here. So right now I've got two separate waves going. I've got one that's green and blue and I've got one that's just straight up red and the uh, Razer Loco pulses with that and all that kind of stuff. The Razer software, or sorry, the Synapse software has not changed at all that much uh, from the previous video that I did to this current video that you're watching now. Uh, you can still do the macro recording which I've already covered. You can still then customize the macro keys and, and stuff like that. But now, the lighting profile has just gotten a ton more awesome. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and just show the profiles I have created uh, just from messing with it. So we have this one profile here, so if I hit FN9, now you just have um, a customized wave effect and I actually added a ripple effect so when I type it goes from like, I think it goes from uh, blue to like red so it's like a fire effect kind of a thing. Um, so that was just one one profile that I customized and I just wanted to just have something be have something be visually interesting. And then the other profile that I have was this one where there's two opposite waves going two different directions. So the way I did this was I went to the configuration and the configuration panel has sort of has completely changed um, which is a bit of a learning curve. And I have to say that, that this software is not perfect. There are still some glitches from what I've like have noticed and stuff and there's some things that they could have improved on um one of them is obviously your light the layering effect is not really like as good as it could be which kind of uh is a little bit frustrating on that part um you know you have to kind of like select individual keys i wish there was a thing that like said not just all the keys but also like you know the spelling keys or things like that but you know maybe over time we'll get those keys or get that option but uh to do this effect specifically I have two effects layers, and these layers are the, if I can get this, do I have to re seriously reselect this every time? Yeah, I guess I do, that's kind of annoying. All right, so I'm just gonna reselect these, but I told the Synapsis software that I wanted to have two different waves, and I picked the rows of waves like I am right now. So I just wanted you know, the top row one color, so we're gonna get all these colors here. And I might actually change this because I think I have a better idea of what I want to do. Maybe I'll try to do this in real time here. Um, and of course, in real time, I mean, I'm not going to speed this up. I'm just going to, you know, go through, painfully go through all these. Okay, cool. Right. So, um, right now I have it doing a blue and green. I can change the angle which this pulse exists. I can change the width of this pulse, which is really cool. I can change the pulse timing. So I can have it be like, you know, one pulse or one second, it will wait, two seconds will wait, etc. I can do the speed of the keys, so I can have it down. And actually, I would not recommend having a speed below 13, because it does not look right at all. Um, it will start to look kind of funny, and the animation of it will not be as clean. Uh, I can do like a split for this wave, which is really quite cool. I can even change which direction that split goes, so I can have it down to like uh, 90 degrees, like so, and it just does this cool little pulsating effect, which is great. Um, or I could actually just not have it at all and just have it go one direction if I wanted to, um, if it applies. Alright, cool. Actually, I'm going to have it go the opposite direction because I just thought that just looked interesting. 
So have it on this, hit apply. So now red's going one way and blue green's going the other way. And actually, I think I'm going to change this. I'm going to have maybe the top row be blue. Uh, and maybe have the bottom row, which is going to be extremely annoying to customize all together. Um, this is one thing, Razor, I really hope if you see this video, please have it so we can select maybe like the spelling keys as well as like the Windows keys. Have it be like, you know, an option to select just the Windows keys. So I'm going to just change all of this, which is painfully annoying. <laughs> but uh, while I'm doing this, uh, you can basically just get really, really um, extremely customized with this. Alright, so we're going to undo that. Alright, so let's change this now to a green. Are you going to do this? Yes! Alright, cool. I got it to work. Alright. So, I can have two separate waves going across, and there's more than just wave effect, believe me. This is just one of the highlights that I really particularly enjoyed that I thought was really fun. Um, so, you can basically just have this cool opposite color wave effect where, you know, only certain keys will function, whatever, and I think you could probably go like a step further maybe and add um all right so let me pick some keys here and see if it will of course the space bar isn't included because you know they didn't think to put a uh, lighting for that one for whatever reason all right i'm gonna pick a solitary color and i'm gonna pick maybe a um i kind of sometimes kind of partial to, to purple because or pink because it just looks kind of interesting sometimes um and i'm gonna have it have there be a black line for the spacing um just for effect wise look the best and i'm gonna have it maybe go maybe this way and change the effect speed down to or uh yeah, maybe to this and see if it worked Yes, it does. So we actually have. Um, now, actually, that doesn't look right. Let's let's fix that a little bit. Let's have there be a bit of an angle. So there you go. So now there's this. There's a whole lot of things going on in this keyboard. We've got blue at the top, green in the middle, and purple on the bottom, which is pretty cool. And actually, here just just for um, effect reasons, let me just apply. Oh wait, do I have to really? Hmm. Okay. Oh, I see. All right. So. Uh, this is kind of weird, and I don't know exactly how to properly explain this, but depending on y which layer you're working with, you have to first, you have to pick an effect, you have to pick the rows of keys that you want, then you pick your colors, and then you go into the whole configuration of what you want, and then you click apply. So that's how you do the effects layering. So it becomes sort of like if you were editing an image, and you're saying, well, on layer, you know, such and such, this is what I you know, one, and I'm not even going to try to go through all this again because this was painful enough to try to do all this, but that's just an example of, like, what you really can do. And I just noticed that I forgot to include this. Um, oh, really? You're going to have me do this all over again? Huh, okay. Well, this is kind of interesting. Um, hold on, I'm going to try just as quickly as possible. That's not the color that I wanted, but we'll fix it, and then add a black, and add this, and it's going this away, like so, something like that, so, there we go, um, and, okay, cool, so I did get this to work, yeah, it's something that you kind of have to sit and play with for a while, but it is really cool once you do get it to work, so, uh, no longer do you have the default wave effect. Now you can actually customize your own personal wave effect, which is really cool. And as you guys saw in real time, I was just adjusting things on the fly and stuff. I'm sorry, I have to, I have to like sort of stop and think about it because it is kind of involved. So I'm not trying to be awkward. I'm just trying to be like, ah, I need to remember how to do all this stuff. So yeah, uh, that's what you can do with one of them. Let me show you another profile that I made um, just to save myself some time. So this was a, another thing where I made my own custom wave effect where I basically did um, all the keys, and I basically created this really, uh, quite involved, um, a uh, huge wave effect across the keyboard where I did, like, a 90% a width, uh, 13, um, I guess 13 second, I don't know if this is an FPS, I don't know how you exactly would count that, but you can change, I guess, how many keys it covers 
I guess a second or something like that. Um, had it of course on automatic so it can continue forever, there's no split, it, there's a two, uh, 242 degree um, slant which looks really quite cool. And then on the top layer of the effects, uh, did I do this for, yes, okay. On the top layer I had there be a ripple effect, so when I hit a key in the midst of the wave there's also now this really cool uh, wave of, or ripple effect, which I think is really cool. So when I'm typing, this looks really cool. Um, I don't have anything up at the moment to type on, but if you can just imagine that as I'm typing, I guess I'll just hit a bunch of random keys. You can see how I'm actually looking at my other webcam here. You can actually, um, you know, see this cool little ripple effect and stuff, which is great. And that again comes down to the layering. So you can now layer your effects, which is really quite cool. Um, and I suppose if you wanted to, you could probably add like spectrum cycling to that and maybe select the specific keys you want to have to spectrum cycling. So there's, there now becomes a very unlimited amount of things you can do with this, which is really quite cool. Um, and they also changed how you do your uh, custom profiles. And I want to say really quickly, I didn't know this until kind of just recently. Um, I have up to technically 10 profiles set for various things I do on the computer and various games that I play. But actually, you can have as many profiles as you want because even though you can't assign after uh, the zero key, you know, there isn't another option to add um, another number assignment. So you can make more profiles, excuse me, you can make more profiles if you wanted to, but you just can't assign a number key, which is kind of unfortunate. I kind of wish Razor would allow you to add more than that, but that's what you got. So, uh, and ex let me explain this a bit further. I made this show off uh, to profile just because it was the best thing I could come up with. This has no shortcut, but I was able to create it anyway, and I can then just select that shortcut if I want to, or that profile, by clicking the Synapsis software and making the flyout come through. And these are all my profiles that I have uh, right, currently right now. So that's just something to I just wanted to make a note of. You can make as many as you want. It's not just limited to a certain amount. So let me go um, show you how the layering has changed. Now this is the prof this is the profile that I have. I just call it normal use. And what they did was uh, these are now known as static profile or static colors. So you can see how I have all these keys selected and it actually, when it updated the software, it actually readjusted all my profiles for me. So now I can now edit just individual keys if I want to. Now the only thing I don't understand is how is it these are red and it's not listed, but um, that's just kind of the way it is. For some reason I guess it's maybe a slight glitch of the software. Um, when it updates, it may not include all the keys that you customize, but you know you can play with that if you want to and figure it out for yourself. So. Your custom profiling is now uh, called, it's a static layer, so you can create multiple layers if you wanted to, to have uh, certain sets of keys be certain colors and things like that, which is really quite cool and opens up a lot of um, easy, uh, it makes it easier to sort the different things that you would do. So if you have like an FPS game, for instance, and you needed like a certain thing for movement, and then you had, say like, uh, I don't like a... I'm trying to think of something. I don't play a lot of FPS games, but for me, maybe like World of Tanks would have like my repair buttons or my driving buttons. I can then add more and more layers to the software to have those colors be, or have those keys be different colors and stuff. So, this is a lot, I know, and I'm trying, and for me to explain it is a little bit difficult, but anyway, I hope you kind of get the point here. That this is now what Razer has allowed us to do, which is really quite cool. And I think that they might hopefully include some more stuff later on. Um, so that's kind of a, the gist of everything. That's sort of, for me, the tip of the iceberg as to what you really can do and customize and stuff. I mean, this is just really fun to just sit here and just watch this effect go off like this and to, you know, have, um, oh, come on. Actually, here, I can just do it from the drop down here to have, you know, these different profiles that do these different things and stuff. This is really quite cool. So good job, Razer, for updating the Synapsis software. I think it was something sort of a long time coming and stuff. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of things you really can do that I have yet to cover, but I just wanted to just kind of say, you know, in the midst of this keyboard, this is what they added to it, and I think it was a really great decision. So um, I'm going to go to my regular camera, and we'll wrap up this video.
and yeah see you guys outside all right so i hope from what i showed you guys on the computer you can really get an idea of like what you can really do with the razor keyboard um or that is to say the chroma keyboard specifically but since this is what i you know was obviously talking about but i think that Really, from what you can do is just sort of the tip of the iceberg of what I got, what I showed you guys you can do. Um, and it's unfortunately a bit of a learning curve, which is something I really didn't like because I was like, I'm sitting there, I mean, I think like under the couple of tries I did try doing with the software was just kind of like, why is this so hard to like, you know, s select specific keys just to do one effect or whatever. So it's a little bit more time consuming than I would like it to be. I think Razer should actually, you know, make it easier that maybe not only do you have your your FN keys be selectable and your ASWD keys be selectable as like a custom preset, but have it so that like maybe like the enter, shift, control, both controls and both alt keys um, should already be like selectable keys in the listing of the software, like inside the lighting effects, and that way it would be kind of easier to uh, to customize it. That's the only thing I would really like kind of harp on when it comes to that soft, you know, come to the softer side of it. But otherwise, it's really great, and I think Razer seems to be making a step in the right direction, which is really, you know, obviously great for them to to do and stuff. Um, other than that, you know, the general keyboard, the general overall use of the keyboard, I just have loved and enjoyed and will continue to use. And I really have been impressed with just Razer products in general and stuff like that. So, I think that's everything that I can think of to say. And thank you guys for watching. If you hung in there watching it, thank you. I'm sorry. I was trying to think of everything again with the software. It still was really new and I'm still learning it, but I just wanted to share what I love, what, you know, I already knew and what I love about it. And you guys know that I love making te teaching videos and things like that. So, thank you for watching. And otherwise, I will catch you guys later. I will hopefully, again, be making some videos within, you know, within a reasonable amount, reasonable amount of time and stuff. But otherwise, I will catch you guys later.